Oh my gosh. What you're looking at are 40 8 millimeter camcorder tapes. Mostly video 8 tapes, a few hi 8 tapes. These belong to the parents of a friend of mine. They were recorded between 1995 and 2006. They are early childhood videos, home videos of said friend of mine. My friend asked me once, she asked me if I had any advice um, as to what they could do so they could watch these tapes again because um, their 8mm camcorder that they had broke. And uh, I said, well, as a matter of fact, I own all the equipment required that I could totally digitize those tapes and put them on DVD or whatever they wanted. And uh, they were ecstatic. They were super happy to hear that. So they're actually going to pay me a pretty fair price um, to digitize all 40 of those tapes. I'm going to put them on DVD. I get to grab Mum's DVD recorder and bring it up here. And yeah, I'm going to do that for them. Um, which should be pretty fun actually um, and give one of my camcorders a good workout I won't use this one the TRV 350 because um, it likes to eat tapes sometimes and I'm not going to trust it with someone else's tapes um, I'll probably use the TRV 340 because some of these tapes are actual video 8 recordings some of them have high 8 recordings and a few of the latest ones have digital 8 recordings, so they actually owned all three generations of 8mm camcorders at one point. So I'll just use the TRV340, it'll handle all three types of recordings, and get those on DVD. So that should be pretty cool. But that's not all I got from my friend's parents. Um, they also gave me something else. Um, when their 8mm camcorder, presumably the digital 8 unit um, used in the later tapes, um, when that broke and stopped working, they went on Kijiji and bought uh, a video camera with the hopes of being able to use it to play back the tapes again. But, um, as they described to me, it worked, but it wouldn't play their tapes. Um, so they gave it to me. Oh my god. This is a Sony Handycam model CCD F501 Video 8 camcorder. 1991 is when this was made. Holy crap, look at that. That's, that's the most beautiful camcorder I've ever seen. That is just so cool. Hi-Fi stereo, so this was a high-end model of the time. Look at that. That's just a gorgeous camcorder. It, it's really beautiful. Um, they bought this on Kijiji from what they described as a kid who said it was his grandfather's and he said it works just fine. Works perfectly. And they found that it didn't play their tapes. Well, they figured it's because this is a, vi a Video 8 camcorder and their tapes may not have been in the video 8 format. Well, I can confirm this is correct. While the majority is video 8, some of it is also high 8 and some of it's digital 8. But regardless, they told me that it wouldn't play their tapes, so they gave it to me. Um, I was pretty darn excited. Thought I had a fine working vintage camcorder. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, they were had. Um, they were just totally gypped. Um, this thing could not be farther from perfect working. In fact, it doesn't work at all. Short of actually powering on and things appearing on the display here, uh, this is totally non-functional. Uh, I've been inside it. I disassembled it as far as I could um, before getting to the point where I knew it would never go back together. This thing is nightmarish inside. Uh, early 90s when there was a lot of technology but still not a lot of electronic integration so it's just a nightmare inside this thing. Um, I have concluded that this probably has bad capacitors. A lot of Sony camcorders from the early to mid 90s suffer now from bad capacitors and uh, I would say that's what happened with this thing.
Um, basically, all that works on it is it does turn on and it beeps. Um, it's got a tape counter display up there that works normally. And it's got an indicator display here that works normally. The viewfinder, it's got a CRT viewfinder. It lights up, but it shows nothing legible. It's totally garbled. It's just an analog garbled mess. And the tape, uh, uh, the, the VCR does eject and it does accept a tape, but when you put a tape in, you hear it make a really feeble attempt to spin up the head drum, but it can't and then it beeps and presumably it would be showing an error um, message on the screen if there was any video output. Not only does the viewfinder not show any legible video, the composite video output, which is right there behind that door, um, that shows nothing legible either. So I would say it's all bad capacitors, bad capacitors affecting the video output. And I did read online that bad capacitors are sometimes the um, control circuit for the head drum is aff affected by bad capacitors. So I would say that's what's happened too. The head drum cannot spin up. Um, yeah, that's too bad. This is a gorgeous camcorder. It's in beautiful shape, cosmetically, and I reckon if it weren't for bad capacitors, this would be perfect working, but unfortunately, um, I would say this thing's at the end of the line. Um, the capacitors are small surface mount um, components. I read online of one guy who was able to replace capacitors in his, and his camcorder worked fine again. But um, I don't have the expertise or the equipment, in fact, to desolder and solder new um, surface mount capacitors. Um, that's just totally beyond what I'm capable of doing. So um, it's too bad. Gosh, what a beautiful piece of equipment. It's so gorgeous just sitting here. I mean, this is like an ornament that you could just put on a shelf even though it's non-functional. Um, it's just so beautiful. Um, but it's too bad. Um, I won't be keeping it. I don't keep broken stuff. I, I offered to my friend's parents, I'm like, hey, the camcorder is actually totally broken. Um, you can have it back if you want to track the guy who sold it down and, and give him what for. Um, but it turns out they actually bought this a couple of years ago. And they just kept it around. So it's mine to keep, do whatever with. Wow, it's just a gorgeous piece of equipment. Um, these early 90s handy cams look so cool, you know, they're real they're super long and really sleek and uh, They just look really really cool um, It came in this camera bag that's full of stuff. I will show you that stuff in a sec First we will power this thing on it's got a battery in it probably no good I haven't tried to see how good or bad it is This takes a NICAD battery, 6 volt NICAD, and uh, right there, that's the power supply, it's plugged into the wall and it's got a place to put a battery to charge, and it's got a fake battery here which clips on the camcorder, so you can see the tape counter display lights up and if I put it in the camera mode, this indicator panel lights up. I find that um, uh, when you first turn it on the indicators are nice and bright and then after a few minutes they get dim. Um, they gradually get dimmer and dimmer with time so my guess is um, the, the failed capacitors are on the, um, the power board inside the camcorder and so things aren't getting the right voltage. Um, they're getting too low of a voltage. This display is getting bad voltage and what also happens is you can see the CRT viewfinder there it's just got these weird stripes on the display and as the minutes go by it also gets dimmer and dimmer so I would say um, the CRT viewfinder is getting an ill amount of power and let's see if it no it's uh, the power zoom it's got power zoom but it's not working um, if you let the camcorder sit long enough, the power zoom will start working, and then after that it just stops working. 
so yeah just nothing is getting the proper voltage um, and obviously no legible video comes out the viewfinder or the um, composite video jacks I can hit eject here and that works just fine you see that and when I stick a tape in and close it um, you hear some really faint squeaking sounds and the head drum twitches a little bit and then the camcorder goes beep 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 um, supposedly which presumably means there's an error um, so yeah it's 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 too bad oh the sound does work though when you plug the composite output into a television um, you can hear the sound from the microphone so the audio is actually working but uh, I would say the video circuitry is being affected by bad capacitors and electrical power getting to other components um, the head drum control um, that's being affected by bad capacitors um, but yeah this would have probably worked perfectly so yeah um, they got gypped my friend's parents who bought this for they told me how much I won't repeat it it was not a small amount of money um, some guy they described as younger than me said oh yeah it works perfect no it absolutely does not probably the guy wasn't a liar but probably he plugged it in turned it on just as I'm showing you right now saw that the viewfinder lights up and he's like oh yeah it works no, that doesn't mean something works. It means it powers on. If you don't actually put a tape in and test it, you can't say that it works. Sheesh. Anyway, it's um, it's unfortunate. So that's enough of that. You get a faint smell of hot electronics after a while. Just really faint. It's probably leaked electrolyte from the capacitors or something. But uh, there's that. Let's um, let's take a look at the bag. Things get really weird. Or I should say things get cool, but also a little weird. Um, it's a nice camera bag. I'll probably keep this for myself. God knows I've got enough digital cameras now. I could probably use it. Let's see what we got in here. There's some pretty cool stuff. Um, this is a Ziploc bag, and inside it, take a look at this, it's the packaging for a Sony Infolithium L-Series battery. That's so cool, so, they said that the stuff in here was there when they bought it, so, even though this obviously isn't a battery for that camcorder, um, it came in the bag, so... Maybe it was my friend's parents who put that in there, because they definitely owned a camcorder that used this type of battery. Well, actually, you know what? I know it wasn't them, because here's the original receipt for it. And uh, it, it, the store is in Manitoba, which they've never lived in. So someone else bought this for another camcorder, and it somehow ended up in this bag. But take a look at this. That's, there's the model of the battery. Ninety dollars! Oh my gosh! And when was this? Is there a year on this? Yes, January twelfth, two thousand. Ninety dollars for a new battery! Holy cow! And apparently, it was an actual Sony store. Yeah, an actual Sony store. That's pretty cool. Winnipeg, Manitoba. That was in there, which is. Oh, it says MVC battery. MVC. They bought this for a Sony Mavica. Oh, that's cool. Not even a camcorder. They bought it for a Sony Mavica. That's really cool. Um, then it came with this. Blacks is or was. Um, I'm not sure if they're around anymore, but they were a very popular Canadian photography store. Um, my Minolta Maxim 3XI was purchased there in 1994. 
Um, lens cleaning tissue. It's just a bit of a, a bit of kind of coarse um, fibrous cloth. So there you go. So that's what was in this bag. Um, oops, these are mine. These were when I was testing the camcorder on a power supply to make sure that the camcorder's power supply was okay. Take a look at this. The original remote control. It's a Sony model RMT502. It's kind of neat. No batteries inside it. Here's a no knowing if it actually came with a camcorder, but here's a composite AV cable. What else do we got? Now this is kind of cool. A Revenue Canada Customs Excise and Taxation Identification of Articles for Temporary Exportation. So somebody took this camcorder probably into the United States. Um, I showed you one of these that came with my late grandfather's VHS camcorder and I did mean to say late um, he passed away a few months later after I uploaded that video let's take a look at this no it's for the Mavica oh my goodness look at this digital camera Sony oh very very cool stay on so this wasn't for the camcorder, this was for the, uh, the Mavica they had, January 12, 2000. So that's when they bought the, uh, the battery as well, the infolithium battery. Oh, that's very cool. Bit of a historical article there. They have another one. Maybe this one's, oh no, this one's a lot older. Look at this, August 16th, 1993. This one's probably for the camcorder. Yes, video camera, Sony. That's cool. So these guys, uh, <laughs> these guys had a fair bit of money, I guess. They had an expensive Sony Handycam and an expensive Sony Mavica. What else we got here? Uh, hmm. Okie doke. And then there's this, it's a notepad, it's had a lot of pages used in it, kind of interesting. And here's another receipt, let's take a look at this. This might be for the video camera. Um, no, what the heck? Oh, that's super cool. Um, this receipt is dated February 28th, 1994, and take a look at what they bought. They bought a Casio portable TV, TV 7500, $240. And a pack of batteries for six bucks. Wow, that's so cool. Man, these guys did have a lot of money. Sheesh. And here's another uh, export certificate. June 8th, 1990. Oh, look at this. Video video camera Sony well it wasn't for this one this one was made in 91 but this thing is dated 1990 so they must have had yet a different um, Sony camcorder and also a Pentax 35 millimeter camera maybe this guy worked professionally as a photographer videographer maybe very 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 cool um, that's it for this pocket. Um, nothing else, nothing hidden else in here. Um, let's check out this pocket. Nothing in there. Oh, some more stuff in here. What do we got? Uh, that looks like a generic RCA style cable. 
an RF modulator, maybe? Ooh, it's a Sony part. RF U adapter? Yeah, it's an RF modulator. Oh, very, very cool. Hey, this is something I do have use for. It's a RCA style to three and a half millimeter audio adapter. Ooh, that's cool. And that's it for that pocket. Um, no pockets in the back. Now the pocket I've left for last is where things get really, really weird. Um, oh, I just thought of something super cool. First I'll show you what they are. Take a look at this. This honest to goodness came in this camcorder bag that this guy sold. Floppy disks. A whole whack of three and a half inch um, high density floppy disks. Hey, it's that guy's name again. He must have been the owner. So what is this? Gilavec, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Doesn't say what it is. I don't know if... Anyway, these are floppy disks. And before, it was like, oh, cool, all right, floppy disks. Who knows what they got on them. But now, I've just realized, with the receipts for a Sony Mavica camera, these could have photos on them. These could have been used in the Mavica camera. Um, so we'll check these out and see what's on them. And then all that's left is a couple of Sony neck straps. And when I saw these before, I was like, these aren't correct for that camcorder. Why would these be here? But I've just realized they were for the Mavica cameras. And what the heck? Wow, an old-fashioned monophonic earbud. Cool, and a little bit gross. And that's it. Oh, no, that's not it. Oh, yeah, there's this. Um, hold on. Yeah. Take a look at this. It's a Kodak lens cleaning paper. And look at how old it is. That's the old Kodak logo, so this must be from, like... This could be from the 50s or 60s. Um, made in USA. But I'm not sure if it has the correct thing inside it. It's got... It's got these stiff pieces of cardboard. Oh yeah, there it is. Wow. Vintage lens cleaning paper. That's super cool. Vintage Kodak. Look at that. A soft, lintless paper specially prepared for cleaning lenses, filters, and other highly polished glass surfaces, safe for coated lenses too. How to clean a lens. Super cool. Wow. Well, I checked all the discs. There were 11 of them in total and nothing on them. So, I think that makes I think that makes 120 three and a half inch floppy disks I have now. Um, oh, 130 counting the 720K ones. That's ridiculous. I have 40 of them that are brand spanking new. I should probably sell them because I have that still leaves like 70 or 80 used ones that I have. So I should just sell those new ones. Um, they'll go bad before I ever get to them. So anyway, um, that's a look at 40 uh, 8mm video camera tapes that I'm going to be digitizing for the parents of a friend of mine. And a very beautiful, but sadly non-functional, Sony CCD F. 501 video 8 camcorder from 1991 and a bag and a bunch of stuff anyway that's it I thought I'd just show you that, that cool stuff and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you later